All right, class, uh, Monday, March 16th here. Um, this second video I've posted today is going to be um, a clarification about the notes that I posted on Friday of last week. Um, so let me just say this. We're not obviously going to have binder checks. That's impossible for me to check. Um, so instead of binder checks, I'm just giving you all the notes. Um, more than likely, I'm going to give you a test. The good news is you're going to have these notes at your disposal. You're going to have your binder at your disposal. So um, these videos that I'm going to post every other day or every day or so um, are mainly going to be to just help clarify um, the, uh, the work that needs to be done or more about the test or in this video, for example, just the notes. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm just going to rattle through the notes, give you an opportunity to just listen in, follow along. I'm going to go along with you guys in the notes and hopefully this helps build um, and develop your uh, um, understanding of the material that needs to be learned. Okay, so let's start. Um, to begin, if you go to the first slide, these are only the notes from the very last class on. Uh, I put, if you have your binder at home, awesome. If you don't have your binder at home, you're going to need to get the older notes from someone else. Um, to make it fair, I figured just put the new notes forward. Um, that way it's the most fair for those who have already done the past notes. And I think that's the fair way. So these are the remaining notes that we have left in this unit for World War II. I'll go through each one, some with more time, some with less time. I'll take pauses to make sure you watch the videos, take a look at the pictures. Um, when I do uh, give those pauses and when you hear those pauses, make sure to actually pause, follow the instruction. Um, that way you can actually watch the video and, um, and uh, we can talk about it and we can go forward. Okay, so let's start with slide number two. This is where we would have started today. This is a D-Day. This is on June 6, 1944, so you should be on slide two. Uh, this was the largest seaborne invasion in history. Uh, at this point in the war effort, Germany had stretched its empire pretty much across most of continental Europe, uh, with a few exceptions. Um, but the Allies knew the only way to ever end this war is they were going to have to get back to mainland Europe um, they're going to have to liberate France. Um, they had already attempted to invade in the South. Remember, if you remember from the last class, they invaded Sicily, which is in Italy. So now they're marching from the South. Uh, the Germans are being at this point surrounded from the South, from us, the East, from the Soviet Union. And then after this invasion, um, uh, D-Day, uh, they're going to be surrounded on all sides. Um, and so D-Day is probably one of the most <clears throat> important days in 20th century history. Um, it is the most important battle, arguably, of all history um, in terms of the, the end result of uh, how it led really to the fall of um, Nazi Germany um, and the Allied victory. So let's go ahead and skip forward to slide three. I'll give you a second. I want you to take a look at that image. I'll give you a second here to just take a look. Okay, if you notice, <clears throat> obviously you're going to see that this is somewhere where there's water. It looks like a coast based off of the color of the crashing water. Those look like waves. Um, and in the kind of flooded beach area, you can tell there are these obstacles. Now, you might be wondering, what are those obstacles? Those were designed in place by the Germans to prevent a seaborne invasion along the um, Atlantic coast of Europe. Um, this was like the Atlantic seaboard, um, and the Germans heavily fortified it. Uh, and it stretched all the way from France, all the way up through Denmark, even up through around Germany. Beaches look like this across Europe, uh, any beach that was touching the Atlantic. So the Germans took a lot of time, resources 
to develop these defenses. These obstacles were used to stop amphibious uh, machines or uh, boats. So boats that would be from the water and land on the beach and then deploy tanks, trucks, um, people, etc. Um, this would be obstacles for them to prevent them from actually going forward. Um, and they had different uh, versions of this as well. If you go to slide four, give you a second. You see in the picture here, <clears throat> we have Nazi officials kind of walking. It looks like a low tide. Uh, again, these are just more obstacles. We see a little bit of barbed wire and kind of wooden logs. Um, you could just imagine the amount of trees that had to be cut down across Europe for this effort. And, <clears throat> and all these were designed with the sole intent of preventing an invasion. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Here we have slide five. If you go higher up on the beaches, what you would encounter uh, is you would have pillboxes, um, uh, places where machine gun snipers, uh, German um, grenaders, etc., officials, command posts would be at a higher point of the beach and could shoot down on uh, a potential invasion force. Um, so the Germans knew that at some point they were going to be invaded. It was only a matter of time. Uh, and the Allies knew that this is what they were going to have to deal with. Uh, were obstacles, um, as, um, you know, that are across the entire coast almost. Um, they're going to have to rush into uh, bullets um, from machine guns. Um, and they knew this. I mean, this was going to be a, a very significant battle. If you go ahead and go to... Uh, Slide six. So you see here the date, June 6, 1944. That was the day of Pearl Harbor. Um, they landed on the, the beaches of Normandy. Uh, if you want, you can look that up on Google Maps. Um, and you can play around. Just type in like Normandy or D-Day landing. Uh, you can also type the name of the beaches there that are listed in that picture. If you look, there were five beaches. Sword, Juno, Gold, Omaha, and Utah. Um, and they all attacked uh, these beachfronts. If you also notice, it wasn't just the Americans that were helping out. We had a division of Canadians and two divisions of uh, British soldiers. So it wasn't just a complete American um, invasion. Looking at the red dotted line in the background, you also see airborne divisions. Um, the airborne divisions, there was a British and an American <laughs> airborne division. They landed the night before the invasion because the invasion happened in the early dawn morning hours of D-Day on June 6th. Um, the night before the airborne invasion, um, paratroopers dropped down to secure vocal checkpoints, roads, uh, command posts, um, towns. Um, that way, the thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of uh, people who would eventually reach the beaches of uh, Normandy would have a place to move forward. That way they wouldn't just be stranded or trapped on the beach. Um, so the airborne invasion, which happens the night before, is a kind of a forgotten part, I think, of uh, D-Day. But it's also pretty important because without the airborne invasion, um, you know, the a lot of the seaborne invasion uh, soldiers could have been trapped or stuck, which would have been pretty catastrophic. Uh, let's go to slide seven. Take a look at this slide. <clears throat> this is a real picture. This is what it looked like coming out of uh, the amphibious cr uh, cruise uh, ships. They would drop you kind of in the shallow water. Um, they try to get you close to the beach um, and the gate would drop and you would run out oftentimes in the face of bullets, oftentimes in the face of obstacles. Um, sometimes you were in deeper water and you had a lot of gear on and you'd have to like, you know, figure out a way to not drown with all the gear that you had on. I mean, it was a very intense, uh, period of time. Um, and it was very early in the morning. Here we go. Slide eight. Give you a second to get there. And this just goes to show you the mass of, uh, people who were, um, all a part of D-Day, the ships, the planes, everything that really took place uh, for this operation to be successful. 
Um, I mean, we're talking about uh, almost 200, 300,000 soldiers um, that were a part of this invasion from across the Allied uh, forces. Um, I mean, we're talking even numerous more amount of tanks and vehicles and all these things that needed to get to Europe to secure a war effort to help invade Berlin. Uh, the world has never seen anything like it, and more likely than not, we'll never see anything like it again. Um, I mean, it was a very impressive feat of design, planning, uh, and again, will never be repeated again in human history. Go ahead to slide nine now. So, the YouTube link is the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, okay? This is one of the movies I would like you to watch uh, for your uh, movie project. I think it's actually one of the best ones. Um, this does a better job of depicting and really explaining um, how D-Day was um, and what it was like the day of the invasion from a soldier's perspective. Um, most people say it's probably the most accurate portrayal of war in a war movie. Um, that's kind of the general consensus from many historians and military officials. Um, I, I will say this. It, 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 if you are squeamish or you are uh, uncomfortable watching an R-rated film, which is okay, um, <clears throat> you don't have to watch the opening scene because there are there is war violence. Um so I just want to let you know ahead of time before you click on the link that that's um, what you might encounter. But for those of you that are going to go on and watch the video, okay, uh, this is a great time to pause and then open up the link um, and then watch the scene. I think it's about 30 minutes, maybe actually a little less, it might only be 20 minutes. Um, when you're done watching the video and you can come back to me. Um, I want you to think, though, throughout this, uh, what is going on? What would you feel if you were in the position? Um, just kind of absorb it all and take in uh, the whole thing. So now is a great chance to pause. So I'll wait a few seconds, allow you to pause. Okay. So you've just seen the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, obviously pretty traumatic, scary, people calling for their mothers, being shot at the second those gates drop down, uh, people's arms and limbs being blown off, I mean, blood everywhere. You saw the scene where Tom Hanks' character puts the helmet on and it's in the water that's mixed with blood. I mean, it's pretty much red. Um, the total cost of Normandy was pretty high. Uh, in total, about 10,000 casualties um, occurred. About 4,000 were killed um, all in these just little beachhead. Um, so a lot of people were killed or injured. Um, it was a pretty um, violent, deadly battle. But the success of D-Day allowed the Allied forces to finally have a foothold back in continental Europe. And believe it or not, as we're going to talk about, over the next year is all it takes for the Allies to march to Berlin and to end the war. Um, and so that's where we're going to go ahead next. Okay, so let's continue. Okay. Um, we will go... We'll go a few more slides here, and then I'll post a separate video on another day. Okay? So, after D-Day, we are on slide 10 now. We should be on slide 10. So, after D-Day, huge success, huge blow to Germany and to Hitler. Um, now that the Allies had a real foothold in Europe, they were finally able to push the Germans back to Berlin. Remember, the Allies were coming from the south. The Soviet Union was coming from the east, and then from the west, the Allies had just landed in Normandy. Obviously, to the north of Germany is just water, so they were completely surrounded. Oh, hold on. 
Be right back. Making my election right now. Making my election to this project. I mean, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, I'll see you later. All right, that was Mr. Duran. Sorry, should have locked my door. <laughs> Hashtag awkward. Um, okay, so anyways, we're on slide ten. Um, so we're onward to victory. The Germans are surrounded. Once the U.S. enters the war, it's ultimately the downfall of Germany. Um, they're surrounded. They run out of resources, um, and they really have no way of fighting back on three sides, just as one country or even with Italian support. Let's move to slide eleven. The road to Berlin, though, wasn't easy. It wasn't like, well, I mean, it was, only took a year, like Mr. Tomei said. That means it must have been easy. It's not really the case. There were a lot of casualties along the way. Um, one battle just that we're going to talk about for the sake of time is known as the Battle of the Bulge. It was kind of the last stand for the Germans to fight back and keep the Allies out of Germany. Um, it was a massive surprise attack uh, in December of 1944. Now, I want you to think. In December, in this part of the world, it's winter. It snows, it's cold, and it's a time of the year where the elements can hurt you more than the enemy. And that's how this battle actually took most of its damage. Um, you're going to see some images in a second, but the attack pretty much <clears throat> occurs as the Allies are approaching the German border. They've liberated France, and now they're getting closer and closer to entering actual German territory. Um, the German counterattack, this, and you'll see it as we um, show you some pictures in a second, was initially really successful. It actually almost split the Allied army in two, which would have been a big headache and a problem for us. Um, but the dramatic winter weather and a decline of German supplies and reinforcements ultimately cost Germany a great deal of men machinery and resources um, after this battle it was really the last straw for germany let's go to slide 12. so it was a month-long battle <clears throat> it, um, from december to january in 1944 um, to 1945. in total the u.s lost 20,000 lives so more than d-day about 50,000 wounded and another 25,000 captured so approximately about 100,000 or so casualties Germany also had a very similar number of 100,000 men either wounded, captured, or killed. However, the Americans were victorious in this battle. They were able to push back the Germans. And at this point, the Germans were on the retreat from all angles, and victory in Europe was in sight. Let's go ahead and go to slide 13. So this is an image, and I'll allow you time to kind of zoom in and look, but the red arrows represent the German army. The blue arrows represent the Allied forces. And that purple line would have represented kind of the German border. So we're here kind of on the border of France, Belgium, and Germany. Now, if you notice in the image, this is from the battle map, Germany launches pretty much a full bull rush right down the middle of the Allied forces. The goal was to split them in two. And then you can kind of tell based off the arrows, it, they were almost able to do that. Um, however, um, because of reinforcements from the back lines, the Allies were able to pretty much push the bulge back. This is why it's known as the Battle of the Bulge. Because if you were to draw an outline of the red arrows, you would notice that it makes a bulge-like shape. Um, so that is why it's called the Battle of the Bulge. Go ahead and go to slide 14. I think it even better demonstrates the bulge there. The blue lines kind of show you how far back the line was pushed and then how the reinforcements from the Allies was able to push that German force back. Um, we'll go to slide 15. This is just a picture that shows you the conditions. I mean, think about it. Cold. 
what else is going to happen when things are cold? Machines aren't going to work well. The food's going to go bad. You're going to be uncomfortable and cold. You're not really going to be sleeping well. I mean, especially when it gets at night, a lot of people died from exposure and hypothermia. Um, I mean, it was brutal conditions. Tanks weren't working. Guns were jamming. Um, it was very tough time. This was a very hard battle where the elements killed more than the actual enemy did. Go to slide 16. This is where we're going to stop this video today, and I'll post another video in the coming days. Um, this is a video on the Battle of the Bulge. Go ahead and watch it. Um, does a good job of kind of explaining the conditions, or at least just so you can see the conditions of the battle. Um, so I want you to go ahead and do that. Um, watch that. Take a second to pause here so you can watch that. It's only about three minutes. Okay, so we're going to stop here for this video because I have to upload this. Um, going forward, be on the lookout either tomorrow or the next couple days for the next video to further clarify on the notes. You can use these videos for the test. Um, I'll even post them in a separate review video as well for the really important stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you for watching the video. Hashtag subscribe, subscribe. I need the followers. Um, and be on the lookout for another video in a couple of days. Uh, all right, y'all. Have a good day.